Okay, welcome to section three, which is use similar polygons. We have two objectives for today. First, we're gonna determine if two figures are similar, and then we're gonna use the ratios of similar figures to find missing side lengths and angles. So what we learned in sections one and two really relates to similar polygons. So we learned about the geometric mean, and we learned about setting up proportions and ratios and solving these proportions. And we learned all of that so that we could learn about similar figures. So the first thing that we should probably talk about is what does it mean for two polygons to be similar? So similar polygons have congruent angles and proportional sides. The notation for similar is a tilde. So remember that the notation for congruent is an equal sign with a tilde, so that tilde relates to the similar part. So congruent figures are also similar. That's where the tilde comes from. So looking at example number one, we see that all of the angles are congruent. So we have this angle is equal to that one, this angle is equal to that one, this angle is equal to that one, and this angle is congruent to that one. So that's the congruent angles part. Now, what does the proportional sides part, proportional sides part mean? It means I can set up a proportion between all of the sides. So on my first figure, the sides are 1, 3, 2, and 5. Okay, so side 1 corresponds to this side of 2. Side 3 corresponds to 6. 2 corresponds to 4 and 5 corresponds to 10. So in the numerator is the first figure, and all the numbers in the denominator are the second figure. So what I essentially did is I set up a ratio between each pair of sides. And what we can see is that all of these ratios are the same. So I get 1 half equals 1 half equals 1 half equals 1 half. So we would say that the two figures are similar. All of their sides are proportional, so all of their sides have the same ratio, and all of the angles are equal. Now looking at number two, it says, are the polygons similar? So two things have to be true. One, the angles have to be congruent. And two, the sides have to be proportional. Okay, so let's look at number one. Are the angles congruent? Well, we don't know any of the angles, but just looking, you can tell that they're not congruent. You can tell that angle S is maybe less than 90 degrees, where angle K is 90 degrees. The second figure, it looks like all the angles are 90 degrees. So we would say angle is congruent. That's not true. Now, are the sides proportional? Well, I can set up all the proportions. The first figure, I have sides of 3, 3, 4, and 4. The second figure, I have 3, 4, 3, and 4 again. So 3, 3, 4. 4, 4. So this is true. All the proportions are equal to 1, but the angles are not congruent. So are the polygons similar? No. So looking at example 1, where we do have similar figures, what similar figures really are, it's as if you took a figure and you blew it up or you shrunk it. So looking at example 1, I took the first figure and I blew it up to get the second figure. That's why the angles are congruent and that's why the sides are proportional. All the sides change by the same factor, but the angles are going to stay the same. Okay, so similar figures, all the angles are congruent, and all the sides are proportional. So let's look at another example. Example number three, it says, write a similarity statement. Okay, so you guys have written congruency statements before. So a congruency statement was triangle blah 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 is congruent to triangle blah blah blah. Okay, in this case, it's similarity, so it's going to be triangle da-da-da-da is similar to triangle da-da-da-da. First triangle, doesn't matter the order that you go in. So the first triangle I'm going to write is QRP. Now the second triangle is very important. If I start with angle Q, that has one tick mark. So on the second figure, that's going to go with angle M. Next I look at angle R, so two tick marks. That's going to go with angle N, two tick marks. And then lastly is going to be angle L. So that's the similarity statement. Now, because these triangles are similar, all of the angles are going to be congruent. So listing the congruent angles. I know that angle Q 
is congruent to angle M. They both have one tick mark. I can also tell from my similarity statement. They're both, both the first angle. I know that angle R is congruent to angle N. So that's the middle angle in the similarity statement. And then lastly, I know that angle P is congruent to angle L. That's the last angle in my similarity statement. Okay, then we are asked to write the ratios of the corresponding sides in a statement of proportionality. So here's what that means. It means I'm gonna write a ratio between all of the sides. So side QR, looking at my similarity statement, the first two letters is gonna to correspond to MN. And then I know that RP, second and third letters, is gonna to correspond to NL. And then my last side would be QP, which corresponds to ML. Okay, so this is the statement on proportionality. Now what I wanna do is I wanna substitute in those numbers to show you that um, these proportions are true or that they're equal. So QR is 18.4, MN is 9.2, RP is 20.8. I'm just taking these right from the figure. NL is 10.4. QP is 10.8. And then ML is 5.4. Now if you simplify all of these, you get 2 over 1 equals 2 over 1 equals 2 over 1. Okay, so these triangles are similar for two reasons. One, all of their angles are congruent, which we listed in part B. And all of the sides are proportional, which is what we just showed. All of the sides have the same scale factor or have the same ratio. So what I did is I took that first triangle and I divided all the sides by two. And that's how I got the second triangle. So I took the first triangle and I shrunk it to get the second triangle. That's why the triangles are similar. It's kind of like what we talked about last section with scale drawings. So we talked about maps. Maps are a smaller version of real life. So this is if you took the, the real earth and you shrunk it down to a map, that, that represents similar figures. So now with similar figures, we've talked about the angles are congruent and the sides are proportional. That introduces the next idea. So the scale factor is the ratio of the corresponding sides. So in number three, 2 over 1 would have been my scale factor. That, that's the ratio of the sides. So each pair of sides is going to have the same scale factor. So in example 4, it says ABCD is similar to EFGH. Find the scale factor. So this one should be pretty easy. I only have two sides to compare. So I know that 10 and 20 correspond. Now to check, I know that they correspond because of the similarity statement. I know that AD corresponds to EH. So my scale factor would be 10 over 20, which is just 1 half. Okay, now 1 half is called the scale factor from ABCD to EFGH. The reason that we say that this is the scale factor from ABCD to EFGH is that in the numerator I have ABCD and in the denominator, I have EFGH. You might be asked to find the scale factor from EFGH to ABCD, in which case EFGH goes in the numerator and ABCD would go in the denominator. So whichever one comes first goes in the numerator. Okay, so let's flip the page and look at some examples that you guys are going to do. Okay, so example five says find the scale factor from number three. This one we already did. So I told you that the scale factor was 2 to 1 because that was the ratio of all the sides. So let's look at example 6. It says, in the figure below, triangle NXY is similar to triangle NMO. Find the scale factor. Okay, so what I would like you to do is first write what's called the statement of proportionality. So that's the one that looks like this, where I match up all my corresponding sides. So I know that NX is going to correspond to n m. So right now, pause the video. I would like you to finish the statement of proportionality, and then I want you to fill it in. 
So for example, nx is 8, and nm, this entire side, is 13. Okay, so right now I would like you to finish this. Finish the statement of proportionality and fill it in. Good luck. Okay, let's see how we did fill in the rest of this in. So nx corresponds to nm, xy, so second and third is going to correspond to mo, and then ny is going to correspond to no. So if you mess that up, you're going to get the rest of it wrong. So hopefully we got that right. Then filling that in, xy is a, and mo is 12, ny is b, no is this entire segment. So that's going to be b plus 6. Okay. So hopefully got, we got that right. Now let's find the scale factor. So the scale factor is just the ratio of the sides that correspond. So I have three different ratios here. I have this ratio, this ratio, and this one. Now the second and the third ratio have variables, so those are not helpful. But if I look at this ratio right here, this is the scale factor. So the scale factor is 8 to 13 for the small triangle, so this triangle right here, as compared to the entire triangle. So that's the scale factor. Then it says use the scale factor to find A and B. You didn't have to do that part, but we're going to do it right now. So I'm going to need to set up one proportion for A and one proportion for B. I'm going to use the scale factor because it specifically says use the scale factor. So I have 8 over 13 equals, and 8 over 13 equals. In terms of A, I have A over 12. So 8 over 13 equals A over 12. And then with B, I have 8 over 13 equals B over B plus 6. And now I know how to solve this. It's just a proportion. So I have 13A equals 96. So A equals 96 over 13. Over here, I have 13B equals 8B plus 48. If I subtract 8B, that gives me 5B equals 48. So B equals 48 over 5. So this is the key to the whole section. The whole reason we look at similar figures is so that we can find missing sides. So what you're going to have to do in every problem is set up the statement of proportionality, which is what we did here. Then you're going to have to fill it in, and then you're going to have to solve for the missing sides and angles. Okay, so let's move on, continuing with this idea. The next theorem says if two polygons are similar, then the ratio of their perimeters equals the ratio of the sides. Okay, and the ratio of the sides that has a special name, it's called the scale factor, which is what we just did. So basically, if I know the ratio of the sides or the scale factor, I can find the perimeters, which is really convenient. I don't have to find all the sides. So let's look at number seven to see how we're going to use this. So it says, consider the diagram below where ABCD is similar to PQRS. If the perimeter of ABCD is 33, find the perimeter of PQRS. Okay, so I know that the ratio of the perimeters equals the ratio of the sides. Okay, so now I know the perimeter of ABCD is 33. And I'm finding the perimeter of PQRS. Okay, so this is ABCD over PQRS. So on the left, that's the ratio of the perimeters. Now I need to look for the ratio of the sides. I notice I have sides of 3 and 8. Now I need to make sure that these sides correspond. So let's look at our similarity statement. I can tell that BC, which is 3, corresponds to QR, which is 8. They're the second and third letters. So that ratio of the sides would be 3 over 8. 3 goes in the numerator because it's A, B, C, D. Okay, so I'm going to change that question mark to a P because I'm solving per for perimeter. And then I'm going to use cross products. So I get 3P equals 264. And if I divide by 3, I get the perimeter of... PQRS 
to be 88 centimeters. Okay, so that's really easy and convenient. Um, I didn't actually have to find all the sides of PQRS. I was just able to use the fact that the, the figures are similar and that their sides are proportional to solve for the perimeter. Okay, so key idea here at the bottom. The scale factor, so that ratio of the sides, applies to special segments. So the ratio of the sides, it's the same for the sides, it's the same for the perimeters, it's the same for all those special segments like altitudes and medians um, and angle bisectors. So you're going to see that in your classwork or in your practice that we do in class. Is sometimes you're going to have to set up a ratio that involves some of those special triangle segments. So hopefully we remember those. We have one more page left, so if you will please flip the page. Okay, so this next problem is for you. In the video, we learned about similar figures. Remember, all the angles are congruent and the sides are proportional. And then we use those ratios, so we set up a statement of proportionality or we used the scale factor to solve for missing sides and angles. So here is the example that you will be doing. When you come to class tomorrow, I'm going to be checking to make sure that you have this done. If you can't remember how to do this, you need to look back at example number one. Or example three, I think it is. You need to look back at example three. Good luck. See you tomorrow.